Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Craig. Today, we're gonna to design a tropical style garden border that is low maintenance, low cost, and it should be hardy through most of the UK. This border for your tropical style garden will look great all year round. We're gonna build in evergreens and structure, so it's not gonna be one of these tropical gardens that just looks empty in the winter months. I will get into all of the details as we go through the video. I'll give you the plant names, I'm gonna show you illustrations, and together, hopefully, we can build some ideas for a tropical style garden border that's gonna look good all year round. If you've got any ideas you wanna add, please feel free to add them in the comments below so that everybody can share their knowledge. Right, let's get into it. So when you're starting a tropical style garden border, or any border for that matter, it's always best to start with the structural elements. That's the big plants, any hard landscaping, just to get those key parts of the design in place before you move on to the rest of the design of your tropical garden border. So in this case, I have used evergreens because like I said, I want this border to look absolutely fantastic and lush and tropical all year round. And a good, reliable evergreen plant that you can use is the Fatsia. Now Fatsias have so many cultivars and species available now. You can get variegated ones, you can get different shaped leaves, so you can find something that suits your taste. But because I'm trying to keep this tropical garden border low cost, we've gone for the regular Fatsia japonica, which has these lovely palmately lobed, um, exotic looking deep green, glossy evergreen leaves. So your border is already going to start looking lush and tropical, even in the middle of winter. Now beside that, I've added another Fatsia, and this one is one of my favorites. This is Fatsia polycarpa. Again, it's a plain green leaf, but the lobes, that's the cuts in the leaf, are much deeper, giving it a really, really nice tropical shape. This one can actually tolerate a bit more sun than the regular Fatsia, or at least I found that in my experience. These two plants are a great start to adding that tropical evergreen structure in our garden border. Now we're gonna add some height to the back of the border. Don't be afraid of adding tall plants in your tropical garden designs. They will make small spaces feel so much bigger because you're just utilizing all of that available vertical space. Now, many people immediately jump to using bamboos to get vertical height in a tropical style garden, and there's nothing wrong with that. But bamboos have a well-earned reputation for being a bit of a thug. They can send runners out and you'll get parts of the plant popping up all over your garden. So as an alternative that I like to go to, there's a plant that's commonly called the giant Spanish reed, which is Arundo donax. Now Arundo donax is a fast growing giant grass and you get much the same look as bamboo. In fact, when I've used it in my planting schemes, people always think it's bamboo but it is so much better behaved. It won't wander off down the garden and send up a shoot somewhere. And you can't beat the sound that Arundo Donax makes when the summer breeze blows through it and it just gently rustles away. And they tolerate storms really well. I've grown it where I am near the coast and those coastal storms bend the reeds almost flat to the ground and they just spring back up. They are so resilient. They are great plants. So. I'm gonna add several clumps of these along the back of my border to get that tropical height. It's worth noting that with Arundo Donax, just like the Fatsias, there are variegated versions available and they are absolutely beautiful, but I found them to be much slower growing and because of the variegation, sometimes the price can be slightly higher. And like I say, this is a low cost tropical style border. So if you're looking to start your garden on a budget, then go for the plain Arundo Donax. It grows really big, really fast, and won't cost a lot of money. So we've got our Fatsias for structure. We've got the giant reed at the back of the bed to give us height. But don't think that in a tropical style garden, height just has to go at the back of the bed. In fact, in many gardens, you can utilize taller plants in the middle of your bed. It will make the whole planting scheme just feel so much more established, and it will make your bed feel bigger and sort of push your garden boundaries backwards. Now, as I said, we're going for low cost, low maintenance and hardy plants. 
So there's two options we can play with here. We can add a hardy banana, which is my personal favorite. You cannot beat the jungly leaves of the Musa Basdu banana. It just looks so exotic and so tropical and it's root hardy. So even if that pseudo stem gets frosted back in a harsh winter, it will produce loads of little baby bananas from the rootstock that's in the ground. But if you are growing your garden somewhere where you get continual cold winters and you want something a little bit tougher, try a palm tree. And one of the most easily available palms, here in the UK at least, is Trachycarpus fortunii. It has this lovely fibrous trunk um, and big green fronds, and it will stand up to almost all that the British winter weather can throw at it. So like I say, all the way through this video, I will show you our design developing with the option of the Trachycarpus palm tree for height in the middle of our tropical border, or the root hardy Musa Pazju banana, which is my favorite. But make up your own mind, just see how it goes as the video goes along. It's worth noting that between the banana and the palm tree, the banana is by far going to be the cheapest and it's much faster growing. But if you do have a bit more available budget for your tropical garden scheme, then by all means, indulge in a trachycarpus or any of the other hardy palm trees that are available. And I'll list those in the description below, as well as a link to my blog that will have um, all of this video in detail with loads of plant ideas for you. So as easy as that, all of the structural parts of our tropical style border are in. You can see roughly what the backbone of the garden is going to look like in winter. Now it's already starting to look like a tropical style garden, even though the majority of these plants are winter hardy in the UK. Brilliant. But you don't just have to rely on plants to give you structure in a planting scheme. You can use hard landscaping or ornaments um, to help add height and structure year round in your garden. Now in this tropical garden border, I'm gonna put a large vase or urn. I think they look great amongst tropical plants just nestled with things growing around them or you can even put a pot into the top of the urn and have trailing plants coming out in the summer but you can see how immediately it's just adding a bit of balance with that banana or palm tree on the other side of the bed. And it's giving you that structure that you can rely on because it's not gonna die back. It's a nice bit of hard landscaping. So I'd recommend using something like this or a statue, or you can get water features where the water will be trickling down the side of your pot. It's up to you, but we'll use this as an example. So now that we've done all of the bigger planting in our tropical style border, we can start to look at some ideas for tropical style plants that are much smaller and will soften the rest of the planting. Now, something that's really, really exotic looking is a fern. And ferns have established themselves in rainforests, jungles and forests all over the world. So let's add a few into our border and there are plenty of hardy evergreen and semi evergreen ferns available. So they're gonna look great all year round. Now a top tip for any garden designing you're doing is if you're looking for something that's gonna look natural to the eye, then plant in multiples of three or five. It just works. So we're gonna put three of these ferns around the base of our banana, and it's gonna help add um, different textures to the garden in those colder winter months. And you can see how much they're adding to our tropical scheme already. Now, a personal preference of mine is tropical planting schemes that use a low growing plant right at the front of the border. It can be a ground cover plant or something that just doesn't get that tall. It just adds a really nice punctuation point between your lawn or your path or whatever is butting up against the front of your tropical style border. So in this design, I'm gonna use a grass called a chorus gramineus. Now this is something I absolutely love to use because this grass is rock solid. It won't fail in a cold winter. I've had mine under snow before and it just keeps growing. And it bulks up as the plant establishes. So you can divide this plant and give yourself more plants for free and keep filling out your border, which is brilliant. When you're trying to do gardening on a budget, then plants that you can propagate from is just a winning solution. 
Now we're gonna put these along the front of the border and you'll see that golden yellow leaf is just fantastic for brightening up the border, even on the dullest of winter days. Remember, the evergreen plants are gonna be there all year round, so it will look this good all year. In fact, we're at a point in our design now that this is our winter garden. This is how it will look, either with the banana or the trachycarpus palm tree. But you can see you still have structure and lush foliage even on a cold winter day, which is fantastic. We like this so far. Right, now we can start playing with some of the summer color. And remember, everything is low cost, low maintenance and hardy. So we're not gonna add some of these tender plants the tropical style gardeners use a lot of the time. There are so many hardy exotic plants. That's plants that come from other parts of the world but survive winters here in the UK. We can use those to get that summer color and they will die back and come back the next year. Hardy perennial plants are fantastic for a low maintenance tropical style garden. Right, let's have a look at what we can use. Gardening is much like fashion. It goes through trends and things disappear and then make a comeback. And dahlias are one of these plants. Dahlias are sometimes thought of as boring old cottage garden plants, but there are so many dahlias that look absolutely fantastic in a tropical style garden. And I urge you, look across the breadth of gardening styles before you decide what plants you're gonna put in your garden. Now this video is just an idea, but you can add your taste, your favorite plants to it. Do not use this as a rule book, please. Be loose and have fun with it. Now the dahlia that I like to use, and I think a lot of us use in tropical style gardening, is Dahlia Bishop of Landaff. Now the Bishop series of dahlias have beautiful dark foliage at the base of the plant. And this dark foliage contrasts so well against the deep green lush foliage of our tropical style planting. And Bishop of Landaff has bright red flowers and it will flower for months, all the way through summer and right up to the first frost, so long as you keep deadheading it. Now deadheading is just removing the spent flowers and on a dahlia, it tells you which ones have finished flowering. If it's finished flowering, it will be a cone shape. If it hasn't, it will be a ball, easy. The second plant, which is also making a comeback, is the salvia. Now salvias will flower and flower and flower. And much like dahlias, they are absolutely adored by pollinators. Now, growing a tropical style garden shouldn't be a dead garden. The wildlife should love it as well. So if you put the dahlias and the salvias into your garden, you're gonna have butterflies, bees, moths, it's just gonna burst into life like a tropical rainforest. Now salvia amistad is a hardy to half hardy salvia that has these deep purple flowers. And that purple is such a rich purple, it just pops against the greens of the foliage and it even makes the greens look better and the purple looks like it's glowing. So these are the flowers we're gonna put into the garden and we're gonna stick with just the two colors. Now tropical planting schemes often just have a limited palette, but of bold, punchy colors, hot tropical colors. Think about all those Hawaiian shirts and the colors that are on there. That's the colors that you can pull out and use the flowers of or colored leaves in your garden. And it will give you that hot tropical look. Now this border is coming along really, really well, but we need to add one more hardy tropical style plant that you might actually be surprised to know is hardy. It's a colocasia. There are two hardy colocasias, and the one we're gonna use, which has been very, very popular in recent years, is colocasia pink china. Now pink china has these beautiful heart-shaped leaves that are held high on slightly pink colored stems, which is obviously where it gets its name from. Um, a common name is the elephant ear plant. Because of these huge leaves, they look like elephant ears, and it's these big foliage plants that will really help make your border have that tropical style. Now this plant will grow from underground rootstock and pretty quickly get quite big for spring and summer. And when we get the first frost, 
all of that foliage will get knocked back and it will die back to ground level. But we're gonna plant it in amongst the ferns. So in the summer, the colocasia, or the elephant ears, will come up and it will be the star of the show. And in winter, as that dies down, the ferns will be there to hold the show as winter rolls through and it will help protect all of the rootstock of the plant, especially if we add mulch. But we'll get onto that in a minute. I'm gonna give some care tips. And believe me, there is not a lot of work in maintaining this border. But there it is. That is our budget, low maintenance, low cost, hardy, tropical style border. With only a small, really, selection of plants, you can have a border that looks great all year round and is easy to maintain. Now, I keep saying low maintenance, so let's talk about the maintenance. What would you need to do to keep this border looking like this and looking good in winter? Now, as I said, there are some plants here that will go dormant in winter. So the dahlias and the colocasias will get frosted and they'll start to go mushy as soon as we get cold weather. You can cut those back and just leave the tubers in the ground and leave the underground parts of the colocasia there. Add a mulch. A mulch is just a layer of compost or wood chip that will help protect the rootstock of things in the ground. It will also help keep weeds at bay. So you're not gonna have to do extra weeding because you've covered all of those weed seeds. And in spring, just cut down all of the old growth of your Arundo Donax. That's the big reed at the back of the border. And like I say, it will grow to several meters tall in that growing season. So don't worry, it will soon be up and tall again. And also cut back the stems on your salvia. And do this after the first frost, because you, uh, sorry, the last frost, because you don't want all of that new growth to get frosted off. And that's it. That's, let's call it three mornings work. Autumn, cut back your colocasia and your dahlias. Winter, mulch your beds to protect roots and stock weeds. Spring, cut back salvia and arundo donax. Three mornings work in a 365 day year and you can just enjoy this garden the rest of the time. Now, like I say, this is just a loose idea. It's a design that I've put together and I'm sure that you've got things that you can add to the design. You've probably got experiences and things you've grown in your area. So comment below and let us know. I'll put a link to the blog article and please feel free to check out the shop. And uh, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you're new here because it helps support the channel so much. Thank you so much for watching and let me know if there's any other things that you'd like to do one of these design videos on and uh, I will see you all in the next video. Ciao!